Welcome to this very special edition of Norfolk Perspective On Location. I'm Bob Batcher. You know, for decades, people from Norfolk and, the, in fact, actually the whole mid-Atlantic area used to come to Ocean View for its sand, its water, and its amusement park. It's a hot summer day. I'm up here to enjoy Ocean View, and I'm looking for the amusement park. I don't see it. Peggy Hamlick Phillips, our city historian. Hey, Bob. You know everything. Where was the amusement I park? I sure do know about that amusement park. I spent a lot of time there. I bet. You just turn it around. It's right over there, or it was. I was going to say, that's a condominium. It used to be the picnic area at the amusement park. And then the park ran to the west of it for several blocks, all the way down almost to the old Nansenman Motel. Now, you just mentioned things that I can't see. So where can I find out about this? You go this way. You see the library? Yeah, George Pretlow. Pretlow Library, you go inside and you ask somebody to show you the Ocean View Station Museum and you can see so many of the things that okay, used well, to be there. I, we may not have the park anymore, but we got pictures you know, and I some always, other cool things. I always like talking to you on, on the show, but you know what? I think I will head in there. Okay. Okay. Catch Thanks up all. with see you later. later. Bye. Hello, I'm Billy Spurgeon. Welcome to the museum. Bob Batch, where am I? You're in the museum at Ocean View. Okay, the I Pratt came up. Library. Okay, because I came up looking for an amusement park, right. which people came to for years, ran into Peggy Hale McPhillips, the right. city historian, right. and she told me this was the place to come. It is the place to come, and we have a picture that gives you a better perspective of where the park is in location where we are now. Okay, now everybody keeps talking about this park, but I've never been able to find it. Right. So when was it here? Uh, 1897, I believe it was. Okay, so the late 1800s. Now right. how did they get up here? Well, the, the railroad people had an idea to build a track to Ocean View, a small gauge track. Kind of like our light rail today? And, and they had three cars hooked to it. They brought people down, other people found out about it. So they really used to mob to the beach, and from there it just grew. So originally it was the beach only. That's right, yeah. Then they put in, what, a, like a depot type thing? or Put in a picnic area first. Okay. Right. And, and one of the beautiful things, we got a picture over there, the people used to come to the Ocean View Park like this, Easter morning. All dressed up with ties and hats and long dresses. Obviously, it didn't get as hot back then as it is today. <laughs> Evidently. Right. Okay, so we're actually at the end of Granby Street. Right. Where Ocean View Avenue that we know today. That, that's right, yes. So right across the street right. is the sand and what used to be. You see you have an old picture of it? Oh, sure. Oh, let's no. go look at okay. it. Okay. So this is 1951. That was the peak time of the park, the 40s and 50s. Absolutely. Wasn't it? Oh yeah. Okay. So where are we here in this? Picture? Well, this is where we are now, right now. This is the museum and the library. This is the old bus station. Before that, it was a streetcar station, and you could go under the road there into the park, which ran all the way down to First View that way. Okay. So the park actually, from what we know today, goes from kind of where Nansman Tower is. Would that be where the picnic area is? No, actually it goes farther down to the Nansman Tower. Wow. But it goes almost the first view the opposite direction. Okay, so it had a pretty, pretty good sized footprint. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I'm hearing all kinds of stories about some tunnel that went under Ocean View Avenue? Well, yeah, it was just a two-lane road at that time. It went under the tunnel into the park from the bus stop. Okay, right. so you could either take the, in the early days, you could take right. the railroad up or their small scale right. railroad, yeah, and then is, buses this, started coming uh, up. This is a parking area. Oh, okay. We've got some pictures with some real old cars, the parking lot is full. Wow. Right. Now, I, I see a lot of houses that are starting to build up around it, so it, right. it became a hub? 
They're what kind absolutely. of houses were they? Well, first they built houses down in East Ocean View and Willoughby as summer homes. The people didn't live with them in them year round. Okay. Now something tells me the these summer. people came from Richmond and R Richmond, Far Norfolk. Region? Yeah. Wait a minute. Did you say from Norfolk? Oh yeah, all over. Actually, actually that wasn't as part of the city of Norfolk at that time. That oh, was okay. county. Oh, that, so this is one of the annexation that's chapters, right, yeah. which is a whole different yeah. new show. At one time, this was a theater in my day, but before that, it was a casino. But they had to close down the casino when they, it was incorporated into Norfolk. Now, if you wanted to go to the beach, right. did you uh, have to come through the amusement park, or could you get into the beach without well, going uh, to the amusement park? You could go the, on the beach any place, really. Okay. Right. Now, the park suffered some damage. Um, during the 33 storm hurricane, too. right, yeah. So Ocean View's kind of been dealing with oh, the weather for a long, long time. Right, yeah. Uh, let me ask you, the, the roller coaster, that's the one that's got all the stories. Right. you remember the roller coaster? Absolutely. <laughs> right. you have a story you can tell the public about? Well, yeah, I used to come there. They used to run around twice every morning after 10 o'clock. And we used to come down and get free rides before 10 o'clock on the ferry. Uh, Billy, did yeah. anybody tell you that probably was you got the free ride because they were making sure it was still safe to ride? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did they keep that yeah. thing safe? Is there somebody around here that could talk to us about kind of making it all work? Because I've heard all kinds well, of stories. Well, every about that. morning someone walked the whole thing to check it out, check the wood and the structure and so forth. Okay. Every morning. Yeah. Billy, one of the things I'm discovering when I'm up here at the museum is it's not just a matter of pictures and uh, things written on the wall, but there's people that have great stories. I understand right. there's a guy that kind of grew up and he was a mascot, little guy. Is he somewhere around here? A Joe? Somebody? Yeah, we got Joe right over here. Well, maybe I ought to see about Joe because I understand he knows all the ins and outs about what kept that roller coaster up. That has a great memory. So you're the infamous Joe I've been hearing about, the expert all-knowing. I am Joe Leatherman. Welcome to the Ocean View Station Museum, good to, Bob. Good to be here. First, got to ask you, what makes you such an expert here at the museum? Well, I came to Ocean View in 1964 to live with my father and grandmother from Ohio. And it turns out, it turned out to be a good deal. My grandmother worked at the amusement park for about 40 years, and my father worked there part-time on the weekends. And they should let me spend every day over in the summer uh, 10, 12 hours a day, running around the park. That's tough. I became sort of a mascot of the park. I would do errands for the, the help, uh, pick up trash, run change to the change booths. So, so I got to know the park very, very well. And these are the years before all the safety, OSHA oh, yeah. regulations. Mm -hmm. So you, you, had, you have some stories that probably nobody else knows about, right? Uh, a few, a few. I used to uh, have access to areas of the park that no one else had. And I used to go into the roller coaster and look for change. Uh, Did you find some? Oh, yeah, but mostly combs. Oh, really? But one of the things I used to do... Uh, well, yeah, let's put it in perspective. Let me see. The 60s, the va Vaseline, the combs, they're trying to comb before they go to the big dive. Well, usually it was items that was in uh, their front pocket when they would go down the first hill and then come back up to go to the second one. The lack of gravity would launch things from their pocket, usually cigarettes. Cigarette lighters, but a lot of combs usually. Okay. But and, I did and, find some change. And you only went after the change, not the cigarette lighter, right? Yes, okay, yeah, absolutely. Let me, let me ask you, the, the 33 storm, I talked to Billy about that a little briefly, and I know you weren't here for that, but you're, you are the expert. What condition was the park in with the 33 storm? Well, it pretty much devastated the park. It never really recovered totally. Uh, large sections of the park were closed off and never reopened it again until 1942 when uh, Dr. Dudley Cooper, a local Norfolk optometrist, purchased the property. Uh, originally he had planned just to uh, have the property for an investment. He was going to level the park. But then World War II broke out and the War Department asked him to keep the park running uh, to give the sailors uh, some recreation, an alternative to the bars on East Main Street. Oh, okay. And did it work? Oh, absolutely. Uh, he agreed to keep the park going for the duration of the war, but when the war ended, it had been, become so profitable for him and he had fallen in love with the business that he kept the park open uh, until 1960, I'm sorry, 1979. Okay, now I understand, I mean, Ocean View at that time was a train ride away or a bus ride away. Yes. But it really became a community that supported the city of Norfolk. Uh, I heard something about Dumars actually started up here? 
Uh, yes, Dumars had their first stand here in 1907. And then when the hurricane hit, it pretty much wiped their business out, and that is when they moved to the Monticello uh, Boulevard location. And there are stories galore from that location, oh, yes. too. So, now I understand, around here, I gotta ask you, because some of these clowns are a little on the scary side. Am I the first one to make that comment to you? Oh, no. In fact, uh, Laughing Sal, the mechanical lady who was in an enclosure out in front of the Tunnel of Fun Ride, uh, she was originally put there to make people laugh, but her uh, crazy laugh actually scared more people than it did uh, amuse them. Oh, well, really? Well, the one sitting here in the roller coaster I, it kind of makes me nervous. Now, Peggy was telling me something about the tunnel. Of, tunnel is it Tunnel of Love or Tunnel of... Well, its official name is Tunnel of Fun, but most people call it Tunnel of Love. Okay, now I understand there was some kind of clown head that came down through that? Uh, yes, inside as you went through the tunnel, there would be different things in... Uh, glass enclosures that would light up to scare you. Yeah. And the, our friend here was in one of those. And he's been ensconced on the wall right here in the museum and he was donated or on loan from? Yes. And who's, who, who, was, who found this head? Actually one of our board members, uh, Caroline Doonan, okay. located it for us. Where was it? It was in a private collection of a man who lives in East Ocean View. Okay, so there really still is that tie to the to the history of the of the museum. Yes, mm -hmm. of the of the park actually. The the museum again is in the Pretlow Library. You are an expert because you from eight years old, and then you actually started working at the park. I guess when I turned sixteen, I became an official employee, and at that time, the park kind of lost some of its attraction for me because I was stuck in one location for ten, twelve hours a day. But it was still a big part of my life, and I enjoyed it. What was your favorite job? Uh, actually, pooper scooper in the petting zoo. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, I love animals. I love being around the animals. So it wasn't just mechanical things. They had animals too. Uh, they had a small petting zoo for two years. What was one of the first rides they had? Well, the first electric ride was called the Circle Swings. It was a basic, <laughs> basically a tower about uh, 90 feet high with uh, wooden gondolas suspended from cables that went around in a circle. Now why in the world would they put something like that up for the first ride? Well, it was easy to construct, a uh, very simple ride. And hopefully people survived it to talk about but it. But what's interesting about it, uh, at the time it was built, aviation was in its infancy. So that's why you had wooden gondolas suspended from the cables. But as uh, aviation progressed, they became airplanes and, oh. and, and fighter jets. And by the 1950s, there were spaceships, chrome and red spaceships. So there really was a relevance to the time period for the park. So what other right kind of rides entered in? Well, they had a Ferris wheel, of course, a well, classic Ferris have, wheel. I had one of those, yeah. That was. Uh, Personally, my favorite, when I first came here, it faced Granby Street when it went over the top. Then the next year, they turned it around so it faced the Chesapeake Bay. And I can still remember the, that feeling coming over the first time at the age of eight and seeing the, the bay open up before my eyes. And it became my favorite ride up until the park closed. I okay. loved it. You know, since, since you got the inside scoop, how do they know how long to keep somebody on one of those Ferris wheels? Well, it depended on the crowd size. If there were a lot of people waiting in line, usually it was about five to seven minutes. If there weren't any people waiting in line, in fact, a lot of times the ride operator would start it up, run, get a hot dog or a drink, and come back. Oh, that's reassuring. This was the 60s. So, <laughs> so if you saw your buddy and he was there with his best girl, they didn't get off until she said yes? I guess it all depends on how much <laughs> you paid the operator. There you go. So what other kind of rides? Well, I see this boat over here. Yes, this came from the Kittyland Land area of the amusement park. This was in a concrete moat uh, filled with water, and there were four of the boats. It just went around in a circle, and the kids rang the bell, pretended to steer it. Now, I understand there's a story specifically about this boat, because, again, this is on loan or was donated to the museum? This was donated to us. And the guy that had it, did he, he purchased. Use, did he have a moat? I uh, know he purchased it in 1979 when they had the big auction for the okay. items at the park and he actually put a motor in it and used it on his private lake in Suffolk where his children did. Oh, cool. And that's why this is a one-seater. They were originally two-seaters. Okay, because he had to have a place for the, for the boat. Yes. So again, what's come around goes around here in Ocean View and people still have fond memories and are really supporting the museum up here at the Pretlow Library. Oh, they love so it. we can keep telling those stories. They love it. I understand there's a gal that grew up right here in Ocean View that's with the museum. Is it Caroline? Caroline Doonan. Yeah. Yes, she's right over here. She'd love to talk to you.
Okay, I've been talking to these guys that had different experiences with the park. You grew up outside the park, right here in Ocean View? Yes, I did, half a block from the park. That must have been one heck of an experience. Oh, it was. It was wonderful. Now, were you in a house or cottage? Well, it was a large house, and we uh, rented out rooms to tourists. And my grandmother had a tourist home down the street, and across the street, my, gra my great-grandmother had a large hotel called the Low, it, Low Hotel. It was probably the second largest to the Nansman. Oh, wow. Because so. today we hear about the big chain hotels and all that, but it really was family-run type uh, large homes? That's right, yes. Uh, people, uh, there were a lot of smaller tourist home type things because this was the only resort there was in Virginia Beach. So people came from the Midwest and uh, New York and uh, places down south. Okay, now we're, sta here. we're standing in front of a, um, what I think it sounds like, looks like space age stuff, uh, but it's a satellite view of Ocean View a few years ago, but after the park was gone. So you, if you can kind of give me a reference point as to where we are. Okay, we're right. Okay, right about there. So here, the, right So here. the Pretlow is there, is there. Now, long before the bridge tunnel was put in, uh, how did people get here from New York and all that? Ferries. Uh, the only way you could get here was a ferry, either the ferry from Hampton, the ferry from downtown Nor to downtown Norfolk from Portsmouth, or from the eastern shore okay. into Norfolk. Now, they didn't call the 800 reservation line either, so how did they get a room or know that you had a room in your grandmother's house? Well, I, I know that they sent postcards uh, because I have some where they sent requesting a reservation. And then there were regular customers that came every year. And then there were some that just came down and walked up and down the street. And that's how I earned extra money in the summer. Now, wait a minute. How'd you do that? I sat on the porch and asked people if they'd like to rent a room. And I'd show them the room, tell them how much. And uh, if everything was agreeable, I'd get a, a quarter. A quarter? Yeah. You, uh, yeah, that quarter went a lot quarter. further. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly did. How much was the room? I don't remember. Now, what did you get with the room? Just a room? Uh, usually it was a room and with a, a bathroom that you shared. And, and something tells me there was no central air. Oh, no, there was the breeze from the beach. Oh, I've heard about that breeze <laughs> from the beach. Today we have that breeze from the beach. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn, so you really, what were your first memories of, of Ocean View as a community? Um, I guess the park. Really? That yeah. really was the... Because I, you could sit on the front porch and see the park and uh, the fireworks. Uh, it seemed like every weekend, but it wasn't quite that often. But I could see them from the porch and I got to stay up late and watch them. Oh, so wow. that they were past my bedtime. Some things haven't gone away. We still have the big bands on the, on the, right. on the beach. They used to come down to the Nansman and, right. and to the park. Uh, did there you was see a dance hall. Ah, were you allowed to go to the dance hall? No, they were in my mother's day, she, mother's time. She went to the dance halls and when they had the big bands, and the dance hall burned, and um, and so it wasn't there during oh. my time. But the community is still coming back, and the, the houses are now have replaced uh, many of the hotels. Right. And it's become a true community. Right. Which again, you talk about or show here in the museum at the Prello Library. Um, at the end of Granby Street, and uh, you can kind of get a full flavor of the full history of Ocean View Cancer. Yes, you can. Well, you all have been great uh, host and hostess uh, in this guest that has wants to absorb even more. So I think I'm going to take a stroll around and check out your great grandmother's guest house. You call hotel. it hotel. Hers she was, was a hotel. She was a hotel. She started with a cottage, and then um, in 1907, because she had so many guests at the, from the Jamestown Exposition, she said, "I'm going to, uh, <laughs> I'm going to start a guest house and uh, uh, charge." And she had a cottage, and that's one of the pictures. And then um, a back, a part was added on to the back, and there's another picture of that that my great grandfather and his two sons built, and they used uh, wires to. Um, from the street to the boardwalk to support the foundation, and it was one of the few that didn't lose uh, the house in that in the storm of '33. Oh well, we can so. learn so much right here in the Ocean View Station Museum. I'm oh check sure, it out. okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You're welcome.
been in here the longest time? Or you know what? Okay. It's awesome. This, the, the stories here are just Told great, you. and the people were awesome, and the pictures. You know, one of the things I saw was this poster for that big movie that everybody talked about. What was the Death of Ocean? The Death View. of Ocean View Park. With what's his name? Mike Connor. Yeah, something like that. Mannix. Remember yeah. Mannix? Yeah. Well, but you know, one thing I discovered is it didn't die. Oh it's no, it didn't die. And it really birthed an awesome community now that is uh, full and deep and rich in history and has a positive future ahead of us. Sure, and as I bet you learned in here today, there's still so many memories of Ocean View from people who grew up here and people who didn't, people who come in later in their adulthood. They absorb the history and they fall in love with Ocean View. It's a really special part of our community. Well, and I think what we found is with the, uh, the clown head, which I, I apologize by telling people how, how it interrupted your ride, and the boat in that, that people participate by bringing things in, so they can still do that too. They do, they do. In fact, I think that they will tell you here at the museum that now that it has a permanent home in this great library down here, people are more inclined to bring things in because they know where it will be taken care of, and they do a great job here. Well, I guess we're going to have to venture back to the real world and encourage people to come on up to the museum, which is in the Pretlow, which is a viable, active part of the community. Absolutely, and you can come here and visit the past any old time you want to. It was awesome. Thanks a lot for kind of cleaning me in to what's going on here in Ocean View. We, I, I want to thank you for joining us on this special edition of Norfolk Perspectives On Location. Thanks a lot. This is so cool. Yeah, I really like to enjoy it.